don't know how to do this. It takes work. I got one of those audio books on how to talk to a teen. How's that working out? I am so not going to talk about sex with my grandfather. I'm in way over my head. <laughs> Zach has spoken about how he wrote this for you. So does that change? did that change your approach when it came to reading the script or did you try and just treat it as a new project that came across your way? No, I think, uh, you know, when he was writing it, we were living in LA and the COVID had just happened and the whole world had changed. And um, he started, he stopped procrastinating and, and, and tried to do something every day so that there was purpose when everybody was kind of just figuring things out. Um, and I wasn't allowed to read it. And so when I finally did read it, I didn't approach it in any different way. I actually felt like, I mean, obviously he wrote for me, so my voice was on every single page. And and it, even if there were places where it needed filling out, like every script does, you know, it needs their actor to step into the role. It just meant that that whole corner had been cut. Like mm. the dialogue that we had about this character that I had known much about, it wasn't just, even if I hadn't, been able to read the script I was you know he was coming back and telling me about this thing that he just discovered and this scene that he would um, you know just figured out so I felt like actually you know the approach that I had to the script meant that I was able to be free and honest a yeah. lot sooner than maybe I would have been yeah and also part of that was you were a producer on this film yeah. as well your first time yeah. as a producer yeah Did, is that now an experience you want to do more of a future yes. because it gets you more involved, I'm guessing, in those early days. Of yeah, and also just more, I mean, uh, uh, on on top of being more involved, you also just get to be a part of the making of it. Like, mm. to me, that's the most exciting bit. You get to sculpt it from the, from the beginning, and it's not about having more control for me. It's more about, I have ideas, and I love sharing ideas, and I love seeing them help or come to fruition. Um, and you get to be a part of the creative process from the beginning, which is so exciting. Mm. And for in the in the movie itself, you perform two songs yeah. as a character. Does that mean uh, musicals the next step along in the career? Yes, I mean that was so important to us because I wrote those songs when I read the script. I, mm. I wrote one song when I read the script, um, just to process how this person could feel this, how how you how you would feel what we would think about yourself why is it so hard for her to admit guilt and it's all because she has a deep hate for herself and a deep longing to not want to be there um and i think it was just so important that those songs were a discovery for her they were something that that she could finally admit to herself when she was in rehab so everything about that was just so sweet and tender um and then i was able to record them you know away from the character and not on a squeaky piano in a rehab center and not playing Alison, which was also great. So I feel like I've been able to kind of write them for her and then perform them as her um, and then kind of perform them as me, which is rare. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. It's a challenging role, but you're used to some dark roles in your yeah. career. Um, is it hard to leave them behind once you've finished filming or is there always a part? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I've never had major problems with leaving them behind. Partly because I think most of the characters that I play, even though they're obscure and unique and find themselves in bizarre situations, I've never worried about them. Mm. Um, like, I know that Catherine Lester is fine. Yeah. She's fine. Um, I know that obviously Soraya is fine because she's a real person. <laughs> um, I found leaving uh, Danny from Midsummer behind really hard. I yep. felt very guilty, which is very strange because I've never had that before. But with Alison, the same thing. Like, I do believe that they're going to be fine. I don't know what's going to happen, yeah. but I don't. I don't worry about her. Yeah. I don't think anyone can stop thinking about Danny from Midsummer. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Um, just finally, in an ideal world, are yeah. you in your career? Are you mixing these kind of smaller indie dramas with your big blockbuster like yeah. June 2 and all those ones coming up. Is that an ideal mix for you? Yeah, definitely. I think when I signed on to do Marvel, I was really kind of saddened by the fact that the kind of indie movie world were like, great, now she's gone, she's never gonna come back. And I was always a bit miffed about that because um, I've never seen myself as, a, as like a one trick pony. Like I, I, I don't want to do the same thing over and over again. And the reason why I came into this industry was by small indie films and, and I appreciated the craft and I learned the craft from them. And then I get to work with, you know, massive crews and massive directors and massive films that go on for months. And they both have completely different crafts that do and try and do the same thing, which is just to affect 
at least one person. Yeah. Um, and I love, I love the difference between the two. So I've, I'm always trying to make time and squeeze in the little, the little weird ones as well because yeah. they're important. Yeah.